Welcome everybody to another episode of our Self Care's New Healthcare podcast. Today we're going to be talking about um, this is really part of a series we're doing on weight loss um, and weight related issues and obesity. Um, we're going to be talking about the impacts of stress and how it makes you fat. <laughs> <laughs> um, and so uh, before we get started, let's listen to the Hillroys. I don't take nothing. That a doctor don't prescribe. I don't do no drugs, man. I don't do no drugs, man. I don't smoke no blood, man. I don't do no drugs, man. It angers up that blood, man. So I don't do no drugs. All right. So, um, you know what I have to do before we get started. Uh, this content is for informational and educational purposes only. It is not intended to provide medical advice or to take the place of medical advice or treatment from a personal physician. And I am not your personal physician. So everyone focuses on food, but obviously, as you as the guru of all, you don't think that's, I mean, so many other things impact your, your yeah. weight. Yeah. It's a, I mean, don't get me wrong. Food is a big deal. I mean, we're, it's a big contributor to obesity, at least the types of foods people are choosing to eat. Um, but they are ignoring a lot of other things that are impacting their health and causing their weight issues. Um, and dramatic, and these things do it in dramatic ways. Um, and stress <laughs> is the big one. It's funny because I don't think, and I didn't and for a long time, understand stress and what it does and how insidious it is nor did I understand sleep and how important it was for the repair cycle. I mean, it's, these are things that kind of, I guess because we were never told about it because there's not a good way of um, selling stuff for it. So the, the medical community never... <laughs> exactly, got. exactly. There, there is no um, if pharmaceutical for stress. So uh, we're not going to go down that path. So, uh, you know, I know that whenever I've gotten that little, you know, pooch, and I'm like, what the heck? And it's always during times when I have let stress get the best of me. And that pooch is there when, even when you're eating the same. Yes, even, even when I'm eating the same, it develops because of stress and how it leads to immune dysregulation and how it um, interferes with your endocrine system, your thyroid hormones and, and everything like that. And, and lo and behold, you get a pooch. Cortisol is a lot of that, right? Yes, cortisol, and that is, you know, there are, <clears throat> and there's many forms of stress. You know, we. Yeah, before I go off, you're right. Do you explain what stress is? I don't think people understand that. I mean, we all we all experience stress. It's just a part of life, okay? And and, and a little, and some some stress is necessary for survival. It keeps us alive, um, because you know when you're, but but too much is not good, and so it's a it's a balancing act of of um, the stresses that you encounter and how you deal with it and manage it so that it's not um, making your body go haywire. I mean, it's a throwback to our evolution, the fight or flight. The fight or flight uh, mode. And and so whenever we encounter stress uh, from, uh, and then the way it keeps us alive is because, you know, back in the day, if, if, uh, if a large animal, predatory animal was chasing you, um, you needed uh, a response that would help you get away and survive. And that your adrenal system is that system that really helps you get away. It secretes adrenaline, um, you know, as, a, as the short, as the um, initial um, substance that's, that helps you run faster, breathe deeper, makes you alert. You know, it does everything uh, in your body to help you get away. And that's a good thing. That's a survival technique that we need. But a lot of us are in this fight or flight mode all the time. Well, modern, modern life has created stresses that were, did not originally. I mean, I'm sure caveman had fight or flight for bears and lions. I'm sure they had um, stress from relationships. You know, they had... A, a, Warring a, groups. Yeah, you know, I, people were trying to, you know, take over your community and your village. And so... Um, but now we have all these soft stresses, things that yeah, are yeah, and, and, and they um, have a cumulative effect on the body when and when we're getting bombarded with it in 
in ways I think a lot of people don't even recognize. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and we're going to talk more about, you know, all those things that maybe you aren't appreciating as a cause of stress. And stress can take, stress can be physical, emotional, and mental. And people perceive stress differently. And people manage it differently. Mm -hmm. And when you're chronically ill, you don't, you can't handle the daily stressors like you could if you were healthy. So then that just makes, then that just causes this vicious cycle of stress and ill health. Um, you know, and so when you're stressed, for whatever reason, um, you know, you're running late for work, or you've uh, forgot about an appointment, it's stressful, and you're trying to get there on time or what have you, you know, your body responds by secreting adrenaline and cortisol, okay? That's what it does. Um, that's more of an emotional, mental stress. Um, Overexercising does the same thing. Your body has to secrete adrenaline and cortisol to meet the demands of those, um, those hit classes that you're doing back to back, okay? Um, sometimes you can get away with doing that. You know, it just depends what, on what, what else is going on in your life. Um, and so uh, the sh some of the things that you can uh, recognize immediately when you're stressed, those acute stress responses, you know, running late and stuff like that, you know, your blood pressure goes up, uh, your heart rate goes up. Some people will develop uh, little tremors, you know. You know, when you get excited, at least I do, because mm -hmm. that's, what, that's an effect of adrenaline. And I don't break down adrenaline very well per my uh, genetic testing. But um, so they, they can have these little tremors and stuff. And then, but also your insulin levels go up. Your, um, that's more uh, so associated with chronic stress. And that's really what we're talking about here today is chronic stress. Not the, not the little, the, the episodes of acute stress that you might encounter from day to, you know, day to day. But it's just the chronic stress. And, uh, and when that happens, you know, glucose levels go up. Uh, like I said, insulin levels start going up. And then, boy, that really starts this um, chain reaction of metabolic derangements. Because you started by saying a little bit of stress is good, actually. It helps mm -hmm. our body, right? Right. That's you have to have it. It, ha it primes it. It does really good things for your body. And that's why exercise is good for us. Yeah, a little bit. But there's a, there, you have to have a balance of it. And uh, we are way out of balance. Most of most of the people that I see who come in with with weight issues have a lot of stress that they underappreciate. And uh, and a lot of our you know some of our stress we cannot avoid. You don't, you can't help you know you don't know what life's going to throw at you some days. Well, normally we don't get into the nerdy stuff, but I think it's important because people are like oh stress again unless we explain the science behind it. Right. They may not understand how. So what are, what are, what is the nerdy, the, ner <laughs> the nerdy stuff that makes stress so insidious and actually can enrage well, your health? So, you know, stress will make you fat primarily because it causes, um, immune dysregulation and metabolic derangements. They go hand in hand and they, and it does that in a variety of ways and through, uh, and via different systems in our body. Um, for, for instance, gut health. Stress will do a number on gut health. And uh, we'll be talking more about gut health in, in, in terms of weight issues in, an, in another episode very soon. But, you know, uh, stress will uh, decrease gut motility. It uh, will impact the way that your digestive enzymes um, act and, and, and sometimes reduce the amounts that are uh, secreted. What about your other enzymes, say like for thyroid or there's some Well, I'm going to get into that okay. in just a second. But all the different enzymes could have been. Well, no, these, I'm talking about just digest. I'm talking about the digestive tract right now. So okay. digestive enzymes are impacted negatively. Gut motility is typically slowed down. Um, you can have uh, changes in your uh, stomach acid content, which is again, going to cause some problems with digestion and all of these things are impacting the way that you digest and absorb your food and they often cause uh, contribute to dysbiosis or uh, GI microbiome imbalances um, then it can also cause gut permeability and a leaky gut and all of that is um, um, will contribute to systemic inflammation and inflammation tends to make you fat 
So I think most people think of the of the, the digestive issues with stress as, yeah, I got a little bit of indigestion or, you know, a little heartburn. Right. But they don't understand that's just the, the tip of the iceberg of right. all other stuff that's, that's really downstream. and. Yeah, if you tell me, you, you know, you're getting heartburn or some people will get diarrhea, you know, because of the, probably because of the enzymes aren't acting like they should. Um, or they get constipated because gut motility slows down. And those are all, that's all going to impact your GI microbiome in a very negative way. And we know the GI microbiome plays a huge role in your metabolism and your immune function. And so right then and there, those are red flags for me. Like, okay, it's, it's starting to have impacts on your gut health. Um, and then if you don't get a grip on this, it's going to just get worse and you're going to have more inflammation and more downstream effects. So, uh, yeah, those are, those are red flags for, uh, the, the impact of stress on, on one's gut health. Um, but we're going to be talking more about that in another episode. So the, um, the other thing you'd mentioned about, about thyroid, that's a big one. You know, we have, we see a lot of thyroid patients that have hypothyroidism, whether it's autoimmune or not. Um, and we're always, you know, we don't stop there with, okay, you've got hypothyroidism. Why? And lots of times stress, chronic stress is a big, uh, contributor to thyroid dysfunction. Uh, because cortisol uh, will decrease the conversion of T4 to T3. And T3 is the active, you know, uh, th- yes, the at the cell level, that's what your um, cells need. Um, and so stress and cortisol uh, inhibits that conversion. And it also creates the, causes the conversion of T3 to something called reverse T3, which is an act, which is not an active form of T3. So it's, 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 um, impacting the thyroid function at the cell level. Well, that's what I mentioned. I was saying earlier about the end, cause it's basically the enzymes that convert the T4 to T3 and, uh, and the stress. And it impacts those enzymes. Yeah. Yeah. Cause I mean, I just got my labs back and folks, I do almost everything right. I mean, I'm really, you do, I try really hard, but the two things that, uh, and my, my labs were almost perfect, except my um, T3 was low. Mm-hmm. I had plenty of T4. My TSH was fine, but my T3 was low, which means I was not converting T4 to T3. I'm like, well, why? But the only thing I can think of is we've been stressed. You know, the stress has obviously impacted that. Yeah. And also impacts my gut health, which again is that the, enzy- exactly. the, the enzyme. Right, right. And then gut health is, you know, your gut health has a direct role on your thyroid function in different ways, you know, that we'll, that we'll discuss. So, um, it, it's all connected. You cannot manipulate one part of your body system and not have it impact the rest of your body. It doesn't work like that. It's your body's one big balancing act. And that's the functional medicine mindset. And that is the functional medicine mindset. That's why we, you know, it's a holistic approach. We're thinking about the whole body and really at the cellular level and Good, what's yeah, going on. Because right. most people think of holistic as natural and crystals and chanting and, <laughs> it, you know, the whole, like you said, it's the whole body, the whole body. And yeah. that's, you know, we always, we always talk about silo medicine when we're um, talking about the medical system and they, they, the current medical model loves dividing the body into parts. Mm-hmm. I'm a cardiologist. I'm a GI doctor. I'm an endocrinologist. That, nothing outside of this matters to me. I'm I really, know that's the, that's just, um, it's a good business model, but it's flawed <clears throat> as far as the actual it doesn't work that way. I mean, the body doesn't work that way. I mean, think about folks, if you did a car, a car the same way, I'm only going to work on carburetors or I'm only going to work on the brakes. And, I'm, I'm, and I mean, I know there's, there's oil chain shops and things like that. That's a little bit different, but if you divided the in, the, the car up into air, all these different, the way we divide up the human body, you would never fix a car. No. Ding, ding, ding. That's probably why they never fix us. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And, and I mean, just think about this. So we know that cortisol impacts the way the, the conversion of the inactive form of thyroid hormone to the active form. And that's going to make you fat, mm-hmm. you know, uh, because thyroid, that's helping your cells make energy and do what they're supposed to do. And when that doesn't happen, you tend to put on weight. That's a classic feature of hypothyroidism or, or you know, poor thyroid function. I think people who have delved a little bit more into stress, a lot of times they'll, they'll talk about the adrenal system. How does all this? You know? Well, and we've already, we've talked about that a little bit. You know, you're, what, 
your adrenal system, you know, uh, secretes the stress hormones, cortisol primarily. That's the one that's associated with chronic stress. Day in, day out. I always hear about the HP axis. And then the HP axis, which is just the the hypothalamus, pituitary, adrenal axis. There's all these feedback loops that your body's constantly using to regulate how much or how little you might need to keep things in balance. And, you know, initially when you're chronically stressed, we call it, you know, uh, stage one adrenal fatigue. That's when you're, you're, we can even test for this with saliva uh, tests. And uh, I usually don't need them because <laughs> you're telling me uh, exactly what I usually see on your curves because we check it four times a day, you know, morning, um, noon, mid-afternoon, and before you go to bed. And we can kind of tell what your curves, and they're supposed to follow a certain curve. And they're ten- they tend to be very elevated mm-hmm. when those people are first just chronically stressed. And they can tell, and they, and they can tell you this, they're wired and tired at night. You know, they, their, their body is tired, but their mind is just will not shut off. Or they feel very anxious and stuff during the day. Or they're waking up early in the morning, around 2 or 3 in the morning. That's a body that's wired and tired and probably in stage 1 adrenal fatigue. And then if you let it keep going and you keep burning the candles at both ends for whatever reason, and we're going to talk about that, um, you'll start entering the stages, you know, stage 2 and then stage 3. And you'll eventually, it's, it's, we call it adrenal exhaustion. You will literally, your body cannot produce any more cortisol and adrenaline, no matter what kind of stress you put on it. And these people one day wake up, I mean, they can't even get out of the bed. They're exhausted. These people are just, you know, always needing a nap, cannot, they're hurting, their blood pressures are low, they're dizzy, their appetite goes to crap. Uh, those people are, are in stage three. And, and when we test it, you can, it's exactly what I expect to see. And, and that's not a good place to be because it's hard to dig yourself out of that. That's why I tell people, you better start taking stress seriously. Uh, you cannot keep just doing what you're doing nonstop, burning the candle at both ends, and, and it not catch up with you. Um, do something about it on your terms and and not wait until it's stage three and you can't get out of the bed and then it's no longer on your terms you you have to deal with it then and it's very difficult to dig those people out of that hole that they've dug themselves into i think one of the hardest things about functional medicine for me to get my arms around and this is you know, living with you and listening to it and studying it for the first couple of years i kept on falling into the trap of well where do i want to treat you know what's broken what can i fix and over time, you wore me down because there are so many chemical reactions. Like, we're just going over stress. Thousands occurring every second in your body. And so you, you, if you'll step back and realize there's absolutely no way I can control these variables on the individual level because there's thousands of them. And everyone, the, but the pill for the ill mindset, the way we've been trained to think of medicine, what do I need to treat this? And it's you're going to impact something else. Those and then, and you have to treat that. Pharmaceuticals will they they they're going to impact these chemical reactions in some way that are going to have effects elsewhere in the body. There's no way around that. And once you come to that conclusion that there is absolutely no way to treat that one snip, that that little that that lab value or this, that you you know you're, it's going to create something else. You're going to go after it. Eventually, it'll get to the mindset where I am now, where you, okay, what can I do? And that's stepping back, and it's... Like, lifestyle. It's lifestyle. It's self-care. It's self-care. It's, 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 you, you have the power to correct this, but it's, it's, sometimes it's hard to accept because there's things that you have to do in your life, especially when it comes to stress, where you have to make some tough decisions, and you have to actually acknowledge that you are playing a part in this situation and what are you going to do about it without the lifestyle there is no medication or no supplement that'll ever get you back on top no and and, and that's a hard concept because they've never been taught that you cannot overcome stress with a magic supplement you know you just there's no you can't and i'm sorry to say that yes there are things that can dampen the the cortisol response you know and we use those and they can help Mm-hmm. while we're trying to 
uncover and address why your you know your your adrenal system is so revved up and everything like that and there's lots of things that contribute to that other than just stress okay poor diets are a big one too you right know, if you're bad not bad diets full of sugar and, and and bad carbs and you know low quality foods can also place burdens on the adrenal system just like chronic infect chronic hidden infections can you know those all place burdens on the adrenal system and can make them make the adrenal system secrete a lot more cortisol than it should be secreting. I think people focus way too much on the supplementation. Not that you don't know. If you're low on a nutrient, yes, it's going to have effects. I'm not saying you shouldn't supplement to. And it's just trying to nudge the body. We're trying to remove the bad and put in the good. That's really what it comes down to. But no one and there's a lot of different ways to do that. I guess where I was going with this, no one wants to remove the bad. Because exactly. It, Nobody wants to do it. They just want to take the good. I, tell me what supplement I need to take or what food I need to eat. But they're never considering all the bad things that they're doing to their body. It's just you're, you're never going to get there, people, if you have that mindset. And people who come to us for thyroid treatment, that's one of the first acknowledgments they have to, you know, that you try to get them to get to is like, it's not some magic thing is going to change this. There's a number of things affecting your thyroid. You, you just you just went through how stress alone does it. Well, and, and via, you know, it, it, the impact it has on your gut health, on your thyroid and your, your HPA axis, and, and even the thyroid, you know, the endocrine feedback loops, those are all impacted by um, those stress hormones in negative ways. So, and then, and, and when it comes to, you know, um, we have a lot of women... <laughs> It's always their hormones, you know, we gotta come in. I need, I need my hormones checked. I know it's my hormones. I know they're all out of whack. I can just fix my hormones. And they usually expect, you know, a, a BHRT prescription to fix their hormones. And and lo and behold, you know, we're like, nope. What, you know, we go upstream, right? We're gonna, what are you, how is your diet and your stress? Stress is a big one when it comes to sex hormone balance, uh, especially <clears throat> for women. You know, if, if whatever impacts your thyroid, if your thyroid's not working right, or it, your hormones are not going to be working right either. So yeah. that's a lot, you know, a lot of times when I have women with hormone problems, we are looking at gut health and stress, and we're also looking at the thyroid. Those are all upstream things of, uh, of the hormone balancing act. But stress, so <clears throat> there's something called cortisol steel. And so... Uh, during times of chronic stress, your body will make uh, cortisol at the expense of progesterone. And this is for, for women I'm talking about. And when that happens, you have an imbalance of your body's still making estrogen, but now it's making less progesterone because it's now having to make more cortisol because of your, because you're stressed right and so you have this imbalance now of estrogen to progesterone and that's when a lot of women will start you know they start having a lot of issues with estrogen something we call estrogen dominance so the estrogen is it's much higher comparative to the to the progesterone which will make you heavy which will make which makes you fat inflamed and pain and in pain women who have estrogen dominance tend to they, they're puffy. They complain of being puffy, bitchy, um, soft. You know, they're, they're getting the, that pudge in their belly. Um, they're irritable. Karen. <laughs> yeah, I think, I think we got a lot of, yeah, that might go hand in hand with Karen. Um, <laughs> and then you, they'll also have, you know, irregular periods, tender breasts, those are all um, red flags for estrogen dominance, and it, and, and it's usually a, a, a stress issue, a thyroid issue, a gut health issue. I'm going upstream, you see? Yeah, I mean... You, going upstream. And we're considering all your lifestyle factors and how they're impacting all those upstream Well, look, if, if, you, if you ignored that, so if you ignored that and i like, I want my progesterone cream, that's all I want, I'm out the door. You give it to them, they're feeling better. But their adrenal system for it, like a short period of time, and then they're back, and it's almost worse. Well, because they're they're now they've masked that, but their adrenal system is still. Yeah, they're not addressing the addressing why their hormones are imbalanced. It's just another band aid. It's a natural approach to hormone therapy. 
You know, I like the bioidentical hormone replacement therapy. It's better than the synthetic stuff. Um, but it's still it's still a, a, a Band-Aid. It's not addressing the root cause. No, because if they're at stage one adrenal fatigue, it'll save them for a little bit. But as they progress to stage two and stage, th- stage three... They've now they've burnt out their yeah, adrenal and, system and and they but and, and they're not addressing their gut health and and all of those things too and so <clears throat> you don't don't do that don't fall into that trap of just going to see a hormone specialist who is not functional medicine trained and only wants to throw hormones at you and not address all the other things in your life that could, could be contributing to your hormone imbalances. I mean, you because they'll end up making you fat. Well, you prescribe hormones, yeah, but, and, and, but it's a temporary thing. And it's a, there's, a, there's a time and place for, you know, especially premenopausal and menopausal women. We know that progesterone levels start to decrease um, 10 years pre-menopause for a lot of women. And sometimes it's not, a, women do fine. They don't need anything. Um, some women do, and we can give them supplemental progesterone, you know, when they're, when they're really close to hitting that menopause, they're, and we know, we can kind of look and tell and, and, and through a history kind of gather that it's, yeah, it's about to happen. And we can help them with some symptoms of low progesterone or, or hormone imbalances while we're trying to optimize their hormones. Exactly, because you have 30-year-olds. That you but have. I am very conservative. I just, I really don't want to go there unless you're having extreme symptoms. You know, I don't want you to be suffering unnecessarily, but at the same time, we have got to come to an agreement that this is a Band-Aid right now. We have got to work towards optimizing the way that your hormones are, you know, processed, transported, uh, excreted. There's lots of things to consider when it, when you come to horm- when it comes to hormones well, that's what I wanted to and hear. optimization. That's what I wanted to hear from you. I didn't want to scare off people who might have been coming to us for hormones like, You'll treat them, but it's in conjunction with treating the root cause. This is the Band-Aid. It's going to make you feel better for the next three months while we work on these things right. and fix you as opposed yeah. to kicking the can down. And then we have to have a discussions about pros and cons of continuing hormone therapy, you know, because there are cons and there are pros, and, we, and that's just up to the individual, you know. Some of them are like, heck no, you're not taking away my hormones. I feel great. And I'm like, okay, you know, but... We have to go over a few of the risks, and we have to make sure that... Because there are risks. There are risks, and that's something that we can talk about in a later day. But, um, you know, it, it's an in, it's per individual, and everybody's different. Okay? So that's enough about the hormones. Um, immune function? Immune function, you, you, you probably see this, and you've probably experienced it. During times of chronic stress or really very stressful times, whether it was a divorce, a death, a move, a new job, something like that, um, back-to-back events, you get sick. Mm -hmm. Come down with a viral uh, infection. You know, you get the flu. And that's that's a big red flag for people who tell me they're, you know, they got the flu. I'm like, "Uh oh, what was going on in your life then? You know, uh, were you stressed out and that's why we do timelines on people because I want to see what's going on in their life prior to the time these diagnoses were made or you started to experience these symptoms and um, stress causes immune dysregulation and dysfunction and it, it usually contributes to viral infections bacterial infections and the uh, onset of chronic inflammatory diseases so that's Another thing that they did wrong with the COVID. Yeah, they're stressing everybody out right now. And that is contributing to immune dysregulation. It's making you more susceptible to viral infections. That's what fear does. It's a shame we cannot sue the news agencies. <coughs> you got that right. They are the biggest a-holes on the planet. Just for ratings, they worked everyone up into a tizzy. And still doing it. Yeah, now with the race stuff, they're doing it. Just stressing the crap out of America just so they can... And I'm going to talk about that on what you can do to reduce your stress. Okay. We'll be going over that. So I don't have to go aggro right now? Not right now. Okay. (laughs) But in, in detoxification, I mean, stress impacts every system in your body. Your body does not detox as well, so uh, that can contribute to uh, systemic inflammation as well because when you're not detoxing, you can have a toxic substance that your body is trying to uh, make less toxic and excrete, but if it 
can't do that because of a lot of um, stress and cortisol on board and all the metabolic derangements that result from that uh, you have a detox system that is not is is working subpar it can actually cause even more toxic substances to be produced in the body is that because it's busy dealing with the cortisol and it's that? just the way that it impacts the 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 pathways it it, it um it can block certain pathways that are needed to detox. And then well, things... Why well, is doing that? Because it's protecting it? It's just... That's chronic stress. That's not... We're not talking about acute stress. We're talking about chronic stress. And um, that's a whole other... You're, don't don't confuse the two. Uh, so this, it comes back to this is a, um, a modern world problem. Yes. Um, Maybe God didn't design us all the way for where we are right now with the nonsense, you know, because we, we're not handling the stress very well. No, and it's coming at us from many different uh, areas and ways that, um, that we haven't considered. And so, but we are right now. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. So that's, you know, detoxification pathways are always going to be impacted by uh, chronic stress. That's not good because that also impacts the way that you metabolize your hormones. Um, we, we should have broke out the chart, the metabolic dance that you sometimes yeah, that's use a, for that's teaching. Yeah, that's a good one. And she has this beautiful, very complicated chart. I used to keep it on my wall in my office when we had a when we had an office. There, there are hundreds of little clouds that have arrows going different directions and it shows all the different pathways that's really what woke me up like okay there's no way to treat it's a dance everybody everything is dancing with another and that's why i say is if you manipulate one you're going to oops you're going to manipulate all the others they're they're also going to be impacted and so you don't want to throw you know that's why you want to kind of just nudge things gently that's why it's dangerous to treat at the symptom level. Yes, and, and just you're you're trying to nudge the body back into a balance, because if you use uh, if you go at it super super strong and throw hormones at it, th- things just go crazy then for a lot of people. Mm-hmm. And we see the and I see these people who've been to the hormone specialists or the tea clinics and things like that. They come they out messed come back, up. They just come in. They're messed up. Yeah. But they go in because they start feeling good. Initially, and then it starts to, okay, they, they've they nudged things way, you know, out of balance now. But, but in their mind, maybe I just need more now. Because they never address why, you know, the root causes of their hormone imbalance. But the main thing they're remembering is that they felt good. So right. they, they well, I need more, doctor. Yeah. And sleep is another area where, you know, stress will take a, you know, stress takes a big hit on your sleep. And again, I've said this a lot of times, it's a chicken or the egg scenario a lot of times. You know, uh, sleep, poor sleep can lead to excessive cortisol secretion because it's, you know, whenever you're sleep deprived or you don't get a good night's rest, your body uh, the next day is going to be secreting more cortisol and adrenaline in an effort to keep you awake because you need to be awake (laughs) to stay alive. Right. Um, So... So, and then, of course, stress is going to impact your sleep, always, because it's impacting your thyroids, your hormone, your gut health. It's impacting all of those things. It's causing inflammation, which is going to disrupt, and your, you know, your, uh, your neurotransmitters, it impacts all of that, and it's going to have impacts on your sleep. Stress will, you'll burn through vitamin C and magnesium and some B vitamins, and those are, those are nutrients that your body needs to make these chemical reactions occur to keep your body in balance. But we're using them. But up. we're using it. You, when you're chronically stressed, you burn through those. So uh, you can be new, despite despite the fact that you're you're eating these things. You know, lots of vitamin C and magnesium and B vitamins. Your body could be using them up quicker than you can replace them, and that's another way that you can become, you know, deficient. I mean, I can always tell from my sleep when I'm wired and tired stage one Mm -hmm. i've never gone beyond stage one i wake about two o'clock anxious Mm -hmm. can't go back to sleep often sweaty Mm -hmm. and i never catch back up because by the time i fall back to sleep late in the you know late before morning it just disrupts my sleep and i'm all and then it just creates more stress yes the 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 sleep stress cycle 
that's a bad cycle to be in when you cannot sleep because then it just increases your cortisol levels and then those increased cortisol levels make it hard to go to sleep and sleep through the night and interrupts you can't get into the deep stages of sleep and it's a it's a vicious cycle and it's one that is hard to break i've been there would not wish it on my worst enemy Mm -mm. Um, i used to turn to alcohol for it yeah and that's not a don't turn to the booze because that's just going to make it worse as well because it'll it'll put you to sleep but you'll still wake up you'll still you'll still wake up and then it's doing a number on your gut health too Mm -hmm. so uh, and your detoxification system. Yeah. So, and, you know, and also there's something, you know, if you've ever, <clears throat> you smell different when you're stressed. She says I stink. I accused Paul of not taking a shower one day, and lo and behold, I did a pit check, and it was me. And it was it was just, because I've always prided myself <laughs> on not needing deodorant. I just never, I was just... Paul said I was the least stinky person he's ever known. I just, even when I would work out, so I would not even stink. But when, lo and behold, one day, and this was when I was stressed. There were a lot of things going on in my life that were thrown at me, but I also did not do a good job of, of handling my stress either. But I was not sleeping. I was getting that pooch in my stomach. I was a nervous wreck, just miserable, tired, uh, and I smelled like onions. Is that... Because we're, is it the toxins that we're releasing? What is making us stink? It's, it's, the, it's the impact that it's having on those certain bacteria. You're secreting certain things in your sweat glands that the bacteria in your pits, <laughs> your armpits, they start metabolizing and it gives off a really bad smell. It smells mm-hmm. like onions a lot of times. That's why, you know, what animals, they say animals can smell fear. Yes, they can. And that's how. It's that they quick. can it's that, smell it's that quick. your food. And, of course, they can, you know, their noses are, are crazy. Uh, so they can, yeah, they can pick up fear easily. Well, they can also do so empathic. Yeah. Bo, our poodle. If, if Poodles are super empathic crazy. dogs. Uh, they, you know, I, I researched, before we got Bo, I was researching their traits. And I already knew a lot about them. But it was interesting because they said they were super empathic. You cannot yell at them. That, that's not a way to just dis- do not yell at the dogs. And that's that's true. You, If you even raise your voice, he's going to tuck tail and he goes back to the bedroom and lays down and pouts. No. And then he can pick up on if we're anxious or if we get into these um, spirited debates that we often get into at night, you know, about whatever. He can pick up on it and he, he starts coming over to us and checking us to see if we're okay. You know? I mean, I've even, and I won't go too far. This is interesting for the dog lovers out there, but... I'm sorry, we talk about our dogs a lot. Well, I had a, a Border Collie, Bacchus, who was my Uber dog. I mean, he was, I cannot say enough about him. He was just unbelievably intelligent, even for a Border Collie. I wouldn't call him aloof, but he was not, you know, he liked being petted, and he always wanted to be in the same room with you, but he liked being about 20 feet away. He's just not a nuzzling type dog. In fact, um, you know, he never would sleep with us. He would sleep at the end of the bed, but if we touched him at all, he'd, yeah, I'm, I'm going to leave. <laughs> And he just was, that was his personality. And I was going over to a friend's house that I'd been to a hundred times. And he, I, I would open up the, the truck door, he would jump out, and he would go to their front door. And if the, a lot of times the door's open, he'd walk in. He knew what to do. This particular day, he went towards it, made a hard left, went a whole, <laughs> another door down, and that door was open, and he went in there, even though my friend's door was open. It's like, what, what is he doing? And, um, you know, everyone in Aspen is a dog lover, so I wasn't too worried. And a couple minutes later, five minutes later, the guy comes out and he's, he's crying. And uh, Bacchus is still right with him. His dog had just died, and he was just in incredible grief. Bacchus was able to sense or smell that. And he went in that person's room, laid down with him, and put his head on his guy's lap. Aww. And this is a dog that doesn't like to do this. And he sensed that, smelled that mm-hmm. from one door down yeah i mean the most remarkable thing so the fact that they can sense that uh, is a is a, maybe all have to have dogs as our of our, our, our stress our, our stress sensors yes instead of paying for these expensive tests just keep a dog <laughs> around they'll, t- they'll tell you when you're not doing things right i just wanted to share that i think it's a remarkable story um of, of the empathic ability and the love that dogs have okay so yeah now that you know you guys know that i'm smell like onions <laughs> but I've, I've, I've posted that a long time ago on Facebook about that you know just about stress and 
and uh, sweating and, and, and everything like that. And other people were reporting the same thing. They're like, yes, I started stinking the other day too, and it was when I was really stressed out. I'm like, yeah, your body will tell you. You got to just kind of pick up on those signs and understand what they mean. Yeah, don't wait till you can't sleep at night. Yeah, I mean, if you're stinking, <laughs> it's not like you need to go change deodorants, all right? You need to, like, what do I stink? And typically, it's a, an adrenal system that's overburdened for whatever reason. Stress, poor diet, medications, uh, chronic infections, chronic just being in a chronic disease state, all those put a, a, a burden on the adrenal system. Because you don't recommend any, any perspirant, do you? <clears throat> no, I don't like that at all. Yeah, so that's not the answer, folks. Preventing you from sweating is, makes right. no sense yeah. to me. If you Why stink, are you sweating so much? And if you stink, there's, it's not the sweat. Right, it's it, it's it's your body, what's going on inside, and and it's what those bacteria that reside in your armpits and on your skin, they're everywhere. What they're what they're feeding on and what it's producing. So what do we do about this stuff? So yeah, there's lots of things you can do. Um, uh, one other thing before we get um, go into that, I just want to briefly mention this: uh, chronic stress can alter your DNA. Okay, and it can. Uh, either in, in a negative way, and you can pass on that altered DNA to your offspring. This, uh, that's this epigenetics. Epigenetics. Yes. Um, so, isn't that gr- that's cool though that you know uh, the these traits that are passed down to us, you know, our propensity to be anxious or what have you, or or the way we respond, or just our health in general, is a reflection of the environment, our parents, grandparents, great parents we're experiencing mm-hmm. and they can pass that on through generations but you can stop that cycle you know just by uh, being better to your body choosing to lead a more healthy lifestyle managing your stress and making that and then that's having beneficial impacts on your DNA that you can then pass on to your offspring that's what's so, so you can stop that cycle that's why I have so much admiration for people who come from abusive homes who break the cycle because mm-hmm. most don't break the cycle and that's why a lot of this that's why there is a cycle yes it's the it, epigenetic component that I that we're just now starting to appreciate uh, which is a fascinating topic and a fascinating area of research right now is the is, is epigenetics uh, but you know I, I I look at my father he grew up in a very um a lot of a lot of neglect mm-hmm. and very and a lot of stress you know, um, and just because he grew up poor, his father ran away when he was really young and he had to, you know, he had a hard life. Mm-hmm. But, um, and then, but he did not carry that on. I don't know how much of that I picked up though. You know, how much of my DNA is an, is an expression of what my father went through well, and what his grandparents went through. Now he's super kind. So you didn't, but up. he also is. <laughs> high strong <laughs> and tends to be a little on the nervous side you know and a little anxious and he gets aggro real easy when he's he gets inti- upset he's an intense person he's an in- he can be very but intense an- but he's also a very loving fun loving happy happy person yep so yep. anyway that's we're not gonna sit here and analyze my family <laughs> we don't have enough time for that that's a whole <laughs> it could get a uh, very complicated real quick um, so what do you do? Uh, another thing, childhood trauma. This is something we always address in my practice. At least we ask about it and inquire about it. Um, I see a lot, you know, child, some of us have experienced childhood trauma. Some people go on and it's not a problem. They get over it. Some, it stays with them their lifetime. And um, they, they tend to be subconsciously caught up in this fight or flight mode from the emotional component. from the emotional component of the childhood trauma and there are some people um i i do some stuff on the side some work on the side right now where i work with a lot of these people who have um experienced some very traumatic events in their life um and you're like whoa no wonder you are having all these health problems you've been walking around with this forever it's unresolved and they are truly caught up in a uh, fight or flight mode and it's impacting their health but a lot of that is subconscious and yes. suppressed and, and, and a lot of it's not they they know it's there it's always in the back of their head sometimes they do some days they do a better job of 
pushing it back, mm-hmm. but it's always there. But suppressing it's not the answer. No, it's not. And, and counseling, you know, we always, that can help. It's helped a lot of people. Of course, there's a lot of variation in counselors. Some are better than others and, right. and all that. And there's different ways, different counseling techniques that work differently on different people. You know, one is not, it's not a one size fits all either, but it has to be addressed um, or you're always going to have health problems. Exactly. And that's something that we that we try to address. Our health coaches do. They do it as much as they can. They often they can refer you out to you know people that can do a better job. But at least they can help you recognize that it's there because some people don't even recognize or don't appreciate it appreciate its effects on their life. With that as said, an adult. With that said, Annie's unbelievably gifted. Yes, our health coach Annie Hill um, is extremely gifted in this area. Yeah. She just is. And, and and just helping you uncover unmet needs and imbalances within in your own life. You know, uh, she helped me determine that um, my life was really out of balance when I was going through that very stressful time and I couldn't sleep. I was working all the time and I was completely ignoring the things that often brought me great joy, which was being creative. I am a creative person. I wanted to be an artist. Um, I like to paint and draw and be creative in many different outlets. And that, I just tossed that to the side. I was no longer doing that. And I was starting to resent my job and my business and, uh, and not, never you, Paul, never you, but I, it was causing me a lot of stress and resentment. And that, that will also, you know, cause a lot of emotional turmoil and adrenal burden. Folks, I have a pretty chill life, so yes, she did resent it just because she, you know, was pushing herself too hard, and it, you know, it was an issue. We weren't jealous or anything, but it just you got to have uh, you got to be on the same wavelength as your as your spouse. Yeah, <clears throat> but she helped me work through that and helped me see that, and and then I started taking steps to kind of get my life back in balance. And I'm a happier person because of it. I'm a healthier person because of it. So there's a good example that if you don't deal with, I a, had to have a health coach. If you don't deal with the emotional stress. Mm-hmm it'll it'll simmer it'll cause and it, it will it will express itself as health problems and often obesity and weight related issues so how many of your doctors have discussed this with you on your 10 minute visit yeah I, i'm gonna guess probably close to zero. Zero. yeah so what do you do right mm-hmm. um we've kind of talked about all the ways that stress can impact all these various systems in your body that can cause inflammation, which is always going to cause you to be fat. Uh, most, not always, but tends to, uh, put, you know, increase adipose tissue. Okay. Cause it causes inflammation. And so at first you just gotta, ha- you gotta have an, ad- sometimes we need an objective person to look at our lives and kind of point out some things to us. Um, but you have to assess it and acknowledge that the amounts and the sources, where is it coming from? Some things are in our control. Some things aren't. Um, do you have any unmet needs that, you know, what I just talked about, um, is your life imbalanced? Um, where's the resentment? Do you have the resentments because of that? Um, are you burning the candle at both ends? A lot of you are, I have friends who are. I'm not going to name names, but you know who you are if you're listening to this episode and it's catching up with you and I told you it would. What should you always tell people? If you don't cut some things out of your life, your body will? Yeah. I mean, it's... And you won't won't be able to help anyone then. Exactly. What do you... How are you going to... You know, you're running around trying to solve the world's problems and help everybody and ignoring your health. And, and what good are you going to be to everybody else if you can't even get out of the bed and you're chronically sick and having to go to the doctor all the time? And you're on that trajectory. And you're on that trajectory. And, and I don't want to scare, and I don't like to use scare tactics, but it, it, being overweight is a symptom. The body is, is, is um, there's some metabolic derangements and systemic inflammation. Okay, that's a symptom. You keep letting that progress and you don't address it, other bad things are going to happen. And the The C word is a big one, cancer. And we've seen this in people. Mm -hmm. You're like, man, they need to get a jump on this. Something's going to happen. Sure enough, they get diagnosed with some type of cancer. And so um, I had to have this talk with my mom and my 
aunt. I don't think I mentioned the C word, but I was like, y'all have got to, you know, you're both complaining that you've gained weight and all this. You got to do something about it. It's a symptom. Your body is not working right and other things are going to crop up. And And my mom was complaining about arthritis. You know, I just, she wanted a cream to put on her hand. I'm like, are you, have you not listened to anything I've ever said to you? Why is my family just so resistant I don't. I don't understand. Because you're the daughter, and they, they don't view as a doctor. Um, I mean, they do, but they don't. They listen to some things, and other things they don't. It, it's 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 tough. I think that. Um, so what can you say? No, and I ask my my patients, and I've had to. I, I'm not. I don't ask my patients to do anything that I would not do myself. I don't like to be a hypocrite. Um, but I'll, I'm also not perfect, and I don't expect you to be perfect either. But what can you say no to? Mm-hmm. How, what, how, are there things in your life, especially the ones that you feel like you're always just on the go, burning the candle? What, are, what things can you say no to? I, I have a problem with that. Of, I used to. I don't have a problem anymore. I don't. You know, um, I turn my phone off. I don't answer it. I just don't like talking on the phone. Never have. But uh, at some point, you just got to shut it down and, and get away from people um, for your own sanity and your own health. But I, I used to have problems with saying no. You know, everybody, I'm a physician. Everybody wants to come to me. Will you do this for us? Will you do this for us? Can you can you come have a talk here? Can you, you know, and I'm like, oh, yeah, let me, you know, I was trying to just save the world and get functional medicine out there as quickly as I could. And I, it was, I was burning the candle at both ends trying to do it. Mm-hmm. And so I had to start saying no. And um, that's, again, that's when my stress started coming in da- coming down and my health. I started reclaiming a little bit more of my, my health. Maybe that'll be one advantage. I mean, I always try to look at the silver linings. And with the COVID crisis, people had to change their lifestyles. Mm-hmm. So little Johnny and Debbie didn't have to go to ballet and soccer and this and that. And people are spending more time together, less time running around. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you don't have to... That making you a great... Simplifying life. Get back to the basics. And that's really... I've had to do some introspection on on many occasions and like, what are my life goals? You know, where where do I want to be in 20 years? I want to be healthy and happy. This is a marathon. It's not a sprint. What am I doing right now that is going to help me reach those goals? What am I doing that is directly inhibiting that? And I had to make some changes. And just the way that I approach life now, and I've, I've slowed down a lot. I, I, and it feels good, finally. I'm like, yes, I don't have anything else to prove. I'm, I'm fine with who I am. I'm fine with just sitting out on my deck, listening to the bar, all the different types of birds we have. you know. And so I guess I'm just at that age now. I think, I just, I think I've just worn you down. <laughs> or maybe <laughs> folks. our farm I, life is I, just I, finally rubbing off on me and I'm starting to appreciate it and just the but but I I appreciate it because I I feel the effects it has on my body that are very beneficial I sleep better I feel better I'm happier now that I've slowed down and I live in the country it's wonderful it's I've 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 played the patience game with her about two weeks ago we I canceled our satellite tv I just was tired of it. Like, this is too expensive. We never really watched a lot of TV. We, we, we kind of had it on. I'd have HGTV on on the background, you know. But it was still on all the time, and so I got rid of it. First few days were rough. You were you're like, I was no, it wasn't. I didn't hardly complain at all. I just picked up my. You said this ain't gonna work, but I've noticed that, and I wouldn't and bought a digital antenna. And I, we get. If I put it on top of the house, we have too many Oh, trees. my God. He's been hanging it from the windows. I got cords all over my house. We're tripping over them. I'm just trying to find out the trying best. Trying to pick up some but we, we Western get, yeah, they, stuff that is just all Chips Patrol. I was like, I can't, this is not going to work. I can't watch Chips Patrol. But the last few days, you've, you've kind of, I don't know if I just worn you down, but you, you're, I think you're resolving that maybe we don't have to have the TV. I've been. I I went four or five years without TV. I didn't know that. I, I yeah. I've got, I've got, I I I had no problems with it, but I was busy doing other things. I was always on my bike, and I was painting, yes. and being creative, and so that's something that's on my list. I tell people, get off the smart, get off your social media. That's just making your stress worse, and uh, because of not only the content that you keep seeing on it. 
it's always doom and gloom, but it's also increasing your dopamine levels because it's like a slot machine. They're pro these apps are programmed to increase dopamine levels because that keeps you addicted to their use, you know, like Pinterest and things like that. Um, and that is very energizing to your brain. So it actually just compounds that stress that you perceive and the, and the anxiousness. And so um, I tell people to limit their time on social media and try not to engage in all the, the fear porn turn off the tv and the news especially They're, i mean they, they, they i just they, they they disgust me they need to be brought up on charges because they they're, they're, they, 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 they lie they're inciting riots and if you don't think they're lying you're not paying attention you can because we we go over there we're like oh, let's see how they're trying to spin this today and i'm and i'll just like oh my gosh i just read that pub public document okay and that is exact. That is not what they said at all. But I don't want to get too much caught up in well, that. No, but, just, that's, but that's the stress. It's important to talk about because it's just it's, it's, it's causing it's, everybody to be paralyzed with fear. Yeah, I mean, it, it's and that it, makes me very angry. You know, ninety nine percent of America is is doing really well as far as their particular area, but they want to do all they're showing of these rioting areas. And I guarantee they're going down there and fanning the flames. And well, of course, they're, the, the TV's fanning the flames. Yeah, it's just creating this narrative that is just not true. Do we all? You know, everybody... I guarantee you, ninety uh, percent of our problems would go away if people would turn off the TV. Yes, it, it is a, you know, can we improve? Absolutely. But all they're doing is they're not trying to improve. They're trying to incite and, and trying to inflame this, and and the stupidity of it. I mean, I just get upset when I just see the news. Period. I don't care which news it is it's just they're just it's nothing but straight fear porn and it's making people anxious contributing to stress and ill effects from that and then and facebook and all this picks up on it because they're they're well that's just nothing but news articles. the news on your phone exactly it's news being regurgitated with a little bit extra anger all but the clickbait that's really i mean it's just it is so bad it is so so bad so i i even had a patient who he was having stress-related issues. He couldn't sleep. He was watching the news before he went to bed. And I'm like, you, will you please stop that? That's why you're not sleeping. And that's why you're so upset. And that's why you're having all these symptoms of chronic stress. You're watching the news every night before you go to bed. Just turn it off. It's like a soap opera. You can probably pick it up next week and nothing's really changed. Yeah. I was going to go through and... It'll be some type of other, you know, apocalyptic event that's about to take place. I was going to pull out some... Um... I'm sure you have something, hopefully, about religion in here as far I as... I do. But I was going to um, pull out from Psalms and Proverbs all the different verses that talked about looking up. And, and, it, and not to fear. And, and, and it, the, the Bible goes to great lengths to talk about looking up. They don't... It's, it's almost like if you wanted to ruin us, that's what they're doing. Yeah, they make it it's a, a distraction. They're looking... Exactly. It's that this is... A lot of it is just a distraction, and a lot, and that's what a lot of our, I think a lot of the chronic stress comes is from, we're just con chronically, we, we are being distracted from what really matters. Nature. Nature. That's what I encourage my patients, every single one, get outside. And get out of your house in that, you know, 70 degree temp with the, you know, LED lights blaring on you. Get outside, enjoy the smells, the sights, the sounds of nature. That's what we evolved with. That's very soothing. It's very therapeutic. Yes. It's extremely therapeutic. Get your butt outside. And it, it, it teaches you how small you are and that you're just enjoying the, the world. It's so big. It's so big. And, and we're not supposed to be doing this. So. No, we're not. But, no, we're not. So that's why, I mean, it's the devil. And a, and a lot of times when I am experiencing some you know, increased stress in my life and I'm chronically worrying, it's because I'm not spending enough time with God. Mm -hmm. Just talking to Him. Before we, I want you to spend some time on religion because it is, for us, it's so important and it can help. Nah, don't you, I don't like the term religion. I like to say. Faith. Faith. Personal faith, yeah. My I'm, personal relationship with God. Yeah, we're, we're, Re religion we're, will fail you. We're, we're, we're anti-organized religion because it's... Well, I, it's, it's no, 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 I don't, I, I'm not saying that the church... Churches have a great purpose. I mean, to be with other fellow Christians, I think it's a very great thing. But the church is the people; it's not a building. Correct, and you got to be leery. At least that's you know my view. I don't I don't want to get too much into the you know, the but, religion, but I do. Um, you know, 
a personal relationship with uh, God is the most important thing in my life. And when I get away from that is when I, my life tends to start, you know, um, I start feeling stressed and anxious. And, and you cannot get right with God when you're looking down at an iPad or That's or not smart. spending time with no. God. And that's why nature is, because it is... To me, that is God. I go outside and I look at God's beautiful world that he has created for us to enjoy. Mm-hmm. And uh, I, I I see God everywhere when I go outside and in other human beings. And, you know, and so it's just I'm trying to get into that mindset. Po- positive optics versus negative optics. Yes. And the, the get the track. Yeah. Well, you, whatever you're consuming, it, if it it's, you know, whatever you're seeing, whether it's on social media or TV, is that doing what's that doing to you? It's, it, it's, it's creating a false narrative. Well, I'm not talking about that, but it's trash. Don't consume trash. Just like you don't consume bad food. Don't. Con- yeah, that that's trash. You know, that's yeah, exactly. So bad food's trash, but so is the 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 things you see on TV and, and everything else is just usually dis- just straight up trash and a distraction. And people don't want to. It's it's almost like you you know they don't want to go outside. And of course, the the lockdown even made that worse. But that's that's where the you can solve things. I want to go back to you mentioned about temperature because this goes back to stress, but it's kind of the opposite side. If you don't expose your body to extremes, extremes, hot and cold, it makes you weak. It does, you are, and we know you know that you have cold shock protein, cold shock proteins, heat shock proteins, and you experience it. You you know when you work out, you get hot. When you um, go outside when it's cold, you, you experience that extreme. But it, it's doing really good things to your body, especially the mitochondria, which are the powerhouses of all your cells. They're the ones that, the organelles that produce the energy. And I know we're getting way off topic. No, no, here. but it's important because we, we, we said that stress can be beneficial. Well, that's the kind of stress we're talking about is cold exposure or heat exposure. Yeah. That's stress in your bodies, but that's a good way, stress. That's the yeah. way we evolve. Right. As opposed to stress because Cuomo was saying that you know, this is happening or... And I know we can't all go, you know, go back to the old days and live in teepees and and walk around barefooted and, and pick berries and kill <laughs> kill deer and, and live life like that. But you can go for a walk but, every but day. But we are, you know, we have to live, you know, we, we are in a modern world and what can we do about it? That, that, and there are lots of things that we can do about it. It's a choice. And a lot of you are choosing not to do those things and it's having a detrimental impacts on your health. Yeah, and, and we're all different, and I, some things that bring me great joy and peace, and may not be for you, but you've got to find whatever that is, and do it. Um, you know, where some people find great joy and peace in helping others, and that's great. Do that. Um, we all have our role to play in this world, and and we all have a role to play that God has given us, and I think that is where we truly find our greatest peace and joy is doing what it is that God wants us to do. And we never will know what that is unless we spend time talking to him about it and letting him guide us in that direction. Because to me, I think that's truly where we're going to find our greatest peace. And I can say this from experience, that's the case. Whenever I have felt very um, alone and isolated and stressed out and anxious is when I was not doing what I I knew God wanted me to do. I was wanting to fight it. And focus on the wrong things. Mm-hmm. And so I don't do that anymore. And I'm probably happier than i ever been, despite a lot of the things that are going on. I have found my happiness, and nobody's going to take that away from me. Should we go to meditation next? Since uh, it, meditation, you know, I think there's always... Find, schedule time for downtime, just to be quiet. And, and not be bombarded by, by all the noise. We're constantly being bombarded by all kinds of things. Um, just schedule time, quiet time. And sometimes we have to tell our busy moms, it's just like, can you just go to the bathroom and lock the door and just kind of like sit there and just kind of deep breathe and, and get it together for a little bit. Sometimes that's all you can do. Uh, deep breathe, deep breathing is another, but meditation is, and not to me, I think prayer, you know, prayers, meditation. Um, if you're not uh, a religious type, it's just trying to just quiet your mind. Mm-hmm. Just quiet that mind down. You're not supposed to be constantly thinking about stuff. Just kind of quiet it down, and appreciate the sounds and, and you know, and the the sights and the smells and 
It's funny, that's, that's what the secular person will try to say that meditation is not prayer, is that in their mind, meditation is the absence of something in your mind. And it's like, well, that's, that's difficult. So, because there's always things popping in your mind. Yeah. With prayer, because you have intent, that's how I clear my mind. Like, well, no, you're not. You're you're focusing on that. It's like, at initially, but as you get better and better at this, and it's you, very you, therapeutic. Exactly, because you feel the effects. Well, it, the, right. As you become better and better at prayer, and, you, and it's it's more sincere and it's more natural. You actually are quieting your mind. You're not thinking about the prayer. It starts happening natural. So it's it becomes the equivalent of of um, clearing your mind. I mean, there's so many different ways. I, I don't want people to think that you have to do. Yeah, there's many different ways. For me, I like you and I t- like to take you know hikes mm-hmm. in the nature, whether it's here or in Colorado. And it's just for me, it's a that's when I I feel close to God. Mm-hmm. Which because, so that's a meditation, just taking that, that's a, and clearing yeah, your mind. Exactly. Not, to me, that's a great form of of therapy for me. Um, I do. We've got a, a few other things I want to go over before we before we end we've talked about deep breathing that's a great way to just calm yourself down and if if you feel really stressed out because um when you're when you're stressed you're not taking deep breaths that means you're not getting oxygen to your brain your brain interprets that as you know okay i need some oxygen so what does it do it sends signals to your adrenal glands to secrete more adrenaline in an effect to make your heart rate increase to get more oxygen to your brain so it's this vicious cycle when you're anxious and so deep breathing kind of breaks that cycle because you start taking deep breaths and then your brain gets oxygen like it should and then it start, stops sending those signals to your adrenal glands to, start, to keep secreting the adrenaline and once you're secreting that adrenaline you tense up you're not as relaxed to take those deep breaths you start just breathing just up here and not, not under the belly yeah the and belly breathing folks deep breathing will break that side i mean it i is. used to do it in the er uh, you, i mean you it's hard to sew somebody up after you just you know um dealt with two traumas that rolled in and then you've got to go sew somebody up and your hands are always shaking so you'd have to go like for me anyway i'd have to go just find a spot just take some deep breaths and calm myself down so i could like stitch somebody up so it wouldn't look like i just massacred them I mean, it's amazing how the, the deep breathing and it's just timing your breath, slow intake, slow outtake. Yeah, it really does. It calms me down really and it's, quick. It's a good one. And start with it's your belly. And start with your belly and then work up. And that's something our coaches work. Uh, they discuss with a lot of our patients. Um, I talked about give it to God and let it go. Um, sleep hygiene, you got to improve it. We're going to be talking a little bit more about sleep at some point I th- we've already talked about sleep hygiene before in some of our um, episodes but cold dark room cold dark I mean sleep hygiene is everything a lot of you're doing everything wrong work on the sleep hygiene take it seriously please um, lay off the booze don't use booze to deal with your stress it's gonna backfire okay it just will mm-hmm. and I see it all the time um, you, you also probably want to decrease your caffeine intake because it can also uh, add to the adrenal burden and it can disrupt your sleep, especially if it's at night. So uh, lay off the caffeine as much as that it might be difficult for some of you, but trust me, just try to do it, right? Um, we talked about get off social media, get off the TV, get outside, schedule di- uh, downtime. Exercise is a great way to burn off excessive amounts of adrenaline that you might be experiencing during the day. Just make sure you don't overdo it and this is counterintuitive because we said earlier that overexercising causes that. Well, that's overexercising, but some exercise you got to exercise is not optional. You have to do it, and there's times when I don't recommend it. And that's where people who have just burned out their adrenal system, like they can't get out of the bed. Yeah, you don't need to be trying to exercise right now. You need need to be resting. Mm-hmm. You you're, you've got to build back those reserves. So you might just want to stick with some stretching for right now. Um, walking. But, yeah, but exercise is a great way to get rid of a lot of excess stress. It's a healthy way to do that as well, and you need it. It's good for you, and a lot of you aren't doing that, um, Mom. Um, and then it's also, uh, there's some some natural things. Oh, oh another thing is, um, and this is where those hard decisions come into play, is you got to remove yourself from toxic environments. Uh, this is a discussion that we have to have, at least our coaches have with our, some of our patients who are caught up in um, toxic relationships, whether it's with uh, a spouse, a, um, a relative, a work environment. A friend. A friend um, that 
you, you can't do that to yourself. Don't be a doormat and a punching bag. There, there are people out there who are to, bad for you. There, yes, there are, there, there, yes. You've got to remove yourself from these toxic environments. They're not healthy. Well, you're not being a Christian by not keeping And that it, doesn't like, mean, you're, you're, that it, doesn't mean you're not, you know, that has nothing to do with that. Exactly. You're not, you don't, nothing says you have to sacrifice yourself to keep a toxic relationship going. I've had to do this with, you know, certain friends, family members, and work environments. I've I, had to make tough choices. Um, and, but it eventually, you know, it, it, it helped me. It helped my health to, to get out of that. I'm, uh, we've had people who quit their jobs. They've, they've like, they'll, we won't hear from them and they'll get an email and like, you know, I'm doing so much better. I quit my job. And you're like, okay. Um, all right. Uh, but that was something that, you know, that was their decision. We just kind of helped show them where you know the sources of their stress were coming from and for them it was um, a good decision it's turned out well i learned it from my father i know not everybody can just quit their job okay i get that but sometimes you can and sometimes you have to especially if it's causing your uh health great harm what what i mean your health is everything my dad god bless his soul he had a famous saying for us boys that he's like what's my problem and then we always knew that he was, that was, and, but he meant it. He didn't mean it as a, a threat. It's like, what's my problem? And he would identify it and he would eliminate it. <laughs> I mean, yeah, we, we were raised strict, but I, I took it into life. And there are people, what's my problem? This particular friend. And I'd get rid of them. And all of a sudden, my, my, because they didn't have the same moral compass or, you know, they may be likable, but you just didn't want, they weren't good for you. And they created a toxic environment. They created stress. Like, I'm done. And then, and, then, and then you also have to realize that whatever people, whatever they're going through and whatever they might be, you know, that's, that's a reflection of them. That's not you. Mm-hmm. Okay. So don't take it so personally sometimes. Well, I don't mean getting rid of someone first time they have a, in, you know, right. indiscretion against you. I'm talking about repetitive. Yeah. It's like, okay, this person is toxic for right. me. And that, like you said, it could be a spouse. It could be a job. It could be. Uh, any kind of relationship. Any type of relationship. Yeah. Um, and then, so the last thing um, we often, we, we sometimes um, will recommend uh, things that can uh, suppress the effects of cortisol mm-hmm. on your body, you know, L-theanine, ashwagandha, rhodiola, and things like that. Magnolia. Ma- yeah. There's, th- these are basically things that support. They're botanicals that. Uh, support the adrenal system. And, and dampen the response the, the cortisol response, the, the, need, the effects, I should say. The L-theanine needs an amino acid, but it's it, it's good for sleep and, and calming you down. Yeah, and there's lots of other things that we sometimes recommend too. But, um, but it's a good example that if you just do these and don't address. Yeah, but sometimes it, they just want to take our stress response supplement that has these things, but they don't want to make all the other necessary lifestyle changes. Mm-hmm. And I just sometimes I'm like, you know, I, I don't want to enable the bad behavior. Please tell me you're trying to do all the other things too. And then you take this and then you'll have positive results. This 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 these, can help, you know. But it will not get rid of. But it's not going to, you know, get rid of the the stress that you're imposing on yourself. Mm-hmm. You know. Well, I hope we have scared the crap out of you with stress. <laughs> no, I mean it's important because people it think It is. It's a silent killer. It really is. Sleep and stress are two things that people wear as a false badge of honor. Mm -hmm. I only get by with this amount of sleep. Would it ruin your health? I can handle stress. I can do everything. It's going to affect your health. Don't wear these. Yeah. Don't wear them as a badge of honor. It's going to catch up with you. And like I said, you can do something about it now on your terms, or if you don't, it's not going to be on your terms because one day your body's just going to give out and you're not going to have any choice to, you're just going to, you're going to be stuck and it's, you're going to have a big hole to dig out of. So your, your homework, folks, is to start, you need to assess where, where are my stresses coming from. And, and work with a health coach. They're great. That's what I did, and it helped me tremendously. I just needed some objective eyes on me, and it was great. Yeah, you might not think a task in your life is causing you stress, but someone might from the outside go, ooh, that, that really is stressful for you. You're not enjoying that. But then I have to get it done. Okay, okay we, we can accept that, but is there anything else we can do? Yeah, and Annie, and Annie again, Annie Hale, one of, uh, she's one of our health coaches. She's just she's just wonderful. She's got a gift. For yeah, for the um, 
for the psychological and the emotional, emotional. The emotions, she's just yeah. really good like that because hannah she's, but is, she's super smart too in all the other in all the other ways as well yeah because hannah's awesome also hannah's good we've got a great team yeah. our our health coaches but they're but they're doing this because this is what they've been led to do mm-hmm. you know this is what this is where their passion is and this is where um you know i can't speak for them but i they're both uh have a strong faith and this is where you know we selected, God want, we God selected wants, them for that god wants them to be you yeah. know if you're an athlete and you're trying to improve yourself you go to hannah 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 is your girl yeah yeah miss malibu all right so we're we've thrown a lot at you about stress um but this is a big big topic um especially when it comes to weight related issues because of all of the ways that it interferes with all the different systems in your body that ultimately causes metabolic derangements and systemic inflammation that causes increases in adipose tissue. And folks, we're not, you know, we sometimes all get comments because fortunately, you know, being fat and healthy is finally disappearing because people are like, I'm comfortable in my body. And they were confusing fat as a vanity issue. We're not talking about that. It's, it's the health issue. And the reason we focus so much on being overweight is because it's one of the more immediate um, symptoms right. that you can identify. I don't care that your those 16 labs looked normal that you had on your wellness exam and your blood pressure was okay. If you're carrying around excessive amounts of adipose tissue or even a little bit, it's a sign that something's not going, or going, going right. And those 16 labs are not nearly enough data to assess what's going on. Yeah, this is not. It, a, it really takes a functional medicine approach. This is not a vanity issue. Yeah. This is your health. Yeah. All right. So that was a great. Um, uh, I think this is a pretty good episode. Um, you can tell us what you think. We've got several more um, coming your way related to obesity and weight loss and weight related issues. And um, again, I'd like to you know if you're if you're having a lot of problems if you try to if you've tried to lose weight several times and you're just not having a lot of success with it and you're confused about all the information and you just need some help you need some strategy and you need some accountability i i would encourage you either to work directly with one of our health coaches or try our uh, my total gut job program which addresses all the lifestyle issues that um that contribute to obesity and weight related issues or bare minimum just apply some of the things you learn in this podcast yeah. to your life. That'll, that'll exactly. Make, that'll That's make, why we're doing the podcast. If you don't want to use the health coach, if you don't want to do a program or can't, as, afford it. or can't afford it, the total gut job program, then let, just listen to what we say and try to and try to apply these things in your life and see how it works out for you. Okay. All right. Okay. We'll talk to you soon. Check us out on uh, Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, Instagram. Those are all Amy Beard MD. Yes. And then, of course, on Twitter, we also have self-care is the new health care. And Paul runs that that yeah. one. So if there's any misspellings and bad grammar, it's him and not me. I'm smart. <laughs> not, not, not like people say. Oh, man. Rain Man, you are great with numbers, but your spelling is horrible. <laughs> when you spell so bad that the spell check goes, huh? <laughs> <laughs> All, right. All right. Thanks, guys. Bye-bye. Bye. I don't take nothing. That a doctor don't prescribe. I don't do no drugs, man. I don't do no drugs, man. I don't smoke no blood, man. I don't do no drugs, man. It angers up that blood, man. So I don't do no drugs. I just take back sales and.